The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to your lesson 27 of Distance Learning Education with me, Bate Elvis Ebot, the geology teacher. Today, we talk, before we go into our lesson 27, We'll look at the assignment that we had in lesson 26. When we ended with lesson 26, we had two questions. And the first question was, name the volatile components of magma. Two, give the temperature range of the following types of magma. Remember, we treated the volatile components or the gaseous components of magma. And we also treated the temperature variation of the various types of magma. So, to show your understanding of this lesson, we have to check by giving with these two questions. We have to verify with these two questions. If you did the assignment correctly, then your answer is supposed to read as follows Name the volatile components of magma. The volatile components of magma simply refer to the small amount of gases released as pressure is removed. The small amount of gases released as pressure is removed. And these include water vapor, carbon dioxide gas, sulfur gas, chlorine, fluorine, hydrogen sulfide, and sulfur dioxide. Those are the volatile components of magma. Or we can still call them the gaseous components of magma. We know that magma has three components. The gaseous component, the solid component, and the liquid component. But we wanted you to bring out just the gaseous component or otherwise referred to as the volatile components of magma. And we just said that they include water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur, chlorine, fluorine, hydrogen sulfide, and sulfur dioxide. Question two. Give the temperature range of the following types of magma. Give the temperature range of the following types of magma. One, acid magma. Two, basic magma. The temperature range of acid magma is from 200, 650 degrees centigrade to 800 degrees centigrade. So any magma that has this temperature range that falls within 650 to 800 degrees centigrade, that type of magma is conveniently referred to as acid magma. Then, if the, if the temperature of a magma is verified to range from 1,000 to 1,200 degrees centigrade, then that magma is referred to as basaltic magma or basic magma. Therefore, the temperature for acid magma, the temperature range for acid magma is from 650 degrees to 800 and to 800 degrees centigrade, while the temperature range for basic magma ranges from 1,000 to 1,200 degrees centigrade. 
If you did that correctly, those were supposed to be your answers. Today we're going to look at vocalistry and vocalistry. We have we have looked at the notion of vocalistry. We have treated the original types of magma, the properties of magma, and our focus will be on the types of volcanic eruptions. The types of volcanic eruptions. This type of volcanic eruption is too broad and for convenience sake and for better understanding and appreciation we will break it into two so today we'll be looking at the types of volcanic eruptions one then subsequently we'll look at the types of volcanic eruptions two so our focus of this lesson will be looking at the types of the first part of volcanic eruption In the course of this lesson, we will be asked, we will find out what are the objectives that we want to attain at the end of this lesson. We will look at the prerequisite knowledge that will help us understand this lesson. We will look at the real life situation which poses a problem. And then we will look at the hypothesis that tries to clarify our doubt for the real life situation. We will have learning activities and then we will have a summary of the lesson in the form of a recall. We have an application exercise and then we have an assignment. This lesson of today has as objective the following. One, we will state the basis for the classification of volcanic eruptions. Because of the, in the whole world, we have different kinds of eruptions. And why are they not put in one group? So we are going to look at why they are not put in one group. Secondly, we are going to try to understand the types of volcanic eruption. We'll list them. And finally, at the end of this lesson, we expect to outline the characteristics of the different types of volcanic eruptions. So as the lesson is progressing, make sure these three objectives are well understood and you follow keenly as we proceed. For us to understand this lesson of today, the definition in one of the lessons we treated of magma will give us a better understanding. And the types and composition of magma and also the viscosity of magma, which we had already treated. Remember, we said magma is a complex liquid melt which is formed within the earth due to partial melting. Now, when this magma gets to the surface of the earth, it becomes solidified to give us the different types of rock. And we said that there are different types of magma, acid magma, basic magma, intermediate magma, or anesthetic magma. And we said viscosity of a magma is the ability of that magma to flow, the resistance of that magma to flow. And so, with all this knowledge, we can now proceed to understand our lesson of today. One of the problems that we see that this lesson also clarify in society, the rate and frequency of activities around a volcano could sometimes be misleading. Even with the sophisticated equipment, man's knowledge seems limited. It is true that there is a lot of advancement in technology where so many proposals are being put forward by scientists to clarify man's doubt about some processes in nature. But we realize that some of these sophisticated equipment do not provide exact answers to some of the processes that occur in nature. And we also discover that some of the, 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 the processes that occur in nature defy the proposition or proposal already put forward by earlier scientists. Hence, what is the situation? That is to simply tell that nature is not static. Nature is dynamic. It changes as time goes on. So, because of this, we realize that the rate and frequency of activities around the volcano can never be the same. And we have noticed this. 
So this lesson will help to clarify our doubt about that kind of situation. Now, what is the scientific problem we want to answer? Why do some volcanoes erupt after so many years? Others erupt violently and still some are inactive. Why do some volcanoes erupt for a very long time? That sometimes we can even forget what are the even erupt. Others keep on erupting and some even go into inactivity. What could be the reason behind this behavior of volcanoes? We realize that the 1999 eruption benefited, benefited from the nature of the slope. When we look at the 1990 eruption that occurred in Bakingli, the west coast of Cameroon, we realize that the material flowed down slope, and the, the slope, the nature of the slope, influenced the movement of the material. Again, it has been a very long time that mountains erupted, so it's, it took people by surprise. For so many years, Mount Cameroon went into inactivity. And when that eruption occurred in 1999, many people were surprised. Again, the properties of the two eruptions of Mount Cameroon were not the same. That's the eruption of Mount Cameroon in 1999 and the eruption of Mount Cameroon in the previous years, and even the one that occurred after 1999, around 2000, were not the same. What could be the problem? When is the same mountain erupting? So, there is a scientific explanation to this behavior of the volcano. During this lesson, we shall be carry, we will carry out the following activities. We will try to see the criteria for classifying volcano, the criteria for classifying volcano of the numerous volcanoes in Cameroon and the world. Volcanologists have studied their behavior study the, the composition of the material that resulted to the formation of the volcano and study the material that comprised the volcano and so came out with a guideline for classifying volcanoes. So we are going to look at the criteria. Secondly, we are, looking, we are going to look at the types of volcanic eruptions. The types of volcanic eruptions. In classifying volcanoes, volcanologists have helped us with the guidelines that volcanoes can be classified based on their activity, the rate at which they, they are active, the rate at which they undergo natural processes is one of the basic or fundamental criteria for classifying volcanoes. And based on the activity of the volcano, Three classes or groups of volcanoes are identified. One, we have quiet or dormant or better still, effusive volcanoes. We have active volcanoes and we have extinct volcanoes. Now, the quiet volcanoes are volcanoes that will erupt, and after a short period of time or a certain moment of time, will be are inactive, going to inactivity. Hence, creating a situation where we can think the volcano, that particular volcano, may never erupt. And in that case, it is very challenging for the local population because the, the year it will erupt again, many people will be taken by surprise. The second category of volcanoes based on their activity are those ones that erupt quite often. The period of inactivity is not very long and these kind of volcanoes are referred to as the active volcanoes. Then we have the extinct volcanoes. So on that, the, based on the activity of the volcanoes, there are three principal types of volcanoes we must know. We have 
the dormant volcano, the active volcano, and the extinct volcano. I want to reiterate here that because these are processes that occur in nature, they are not fixed. They are not tied down to one principle. A case in point here is a typical example of the volcano which is found in Spain, La Palma. La Palma volcano er last erupted around 1971. And for a very long time, more than 40 years, no activity has been noticed around that particular volcano. And so most volcanologists term that volcano extinct volcano. But just about a month or two ago, this particular volcano in case erupted and it was very violent. Now, what was the cause this mountain which was formerly, or this volcano formerly referred to as an extinct volcano, to erupt again? Material for the eruption of the volcano is from the Mamati chamber and along the hot spot. So when the material moves away from the hot spot, when there is no material to accumulate that can cause the volcano to erupt, there be no activity. So it becomes extinct. After a very long time, since nature is not static, it's dynamic, it keeps moving, it's diastrophic. Materials can be accumulated year in, year out. But since you and I are not down there to describe that these materials are accumulating, they will accumulate for a very long time and they can move from the chamber to the active hotspot, which now can now release the material to the surface. So, such mountain, uh, volcanoes are very possible. Again, when we look at Mount Cameroon, the fact that it is quiet now doesn't mean it is sometimes referred to as a quiet or dormant volcano. Some other volcanologists prefer to call it active volcano. But all in all is that activities around this volcano are ongoing. And someday, the materials, after accumulating down there hundreds of kilometers in the air, may want to come to the surface. They're making the, the volcano again very active. But for now, we can say it is a dormant volcano. Another group of, another classification of volcanoes is the phreto-magmatic eruptions, which involve the interaction of magma with water. So, two important things for you to know is one, volcanoes are classified based on their activity as quiet, active, or extinct. Then, Based on the phreto magmatic eruptions, we will see the examples of volcanoes that are classified under this group of eruptions. So, we have the, a picture you can see on your screen a picture of a quiet volcano. You see the material is just coming down quietly. That's lava, we we'll see the reddish, and then it's very gentle. And you see that it's coming down because of the nature of the slope. Then we have an active volcano. We see a lot of gaseous material being given off, a lot of dust particles, volcanic dust, per se. So it is a typical example of a, an active volcano. Then we now have that of an explosive volcano. Where there's a lot of sound that is released, we can see how violent the activity around the volcano is, and it's very dangerous. So these three pictures throws more light about the different types of volcano based on the nature of the activity. We find the active volcano very, the dormant volcano very gentle. We find the active sending a lot of gas. And then we find this one sending a lot of material, a lot of ejectors at very high, at very high heights above the, the vent of the volcano or above the crater of the volcano. And the materials move very far because it's explosive. And this kind of, they are kind of crack at one in nature. So those are the three principal types of volcanoes in terms of the way the volcanoes behave or in terms of the nature of its activity.
Now that's an extinct volcano. Or just find like an abandoned hill for a very long time. But like we said, that the fact that it's extinct now, in the years to come, it can resume activity because at this moment that it is referred to as an extinct, material has simply moved away from the hot spot. And so, since we are not there, we, have, we don't have the machine that we can plant or drill down there so that you see that material is going back, it's moving quietly back into the Mamati chamber. We still see just the external part of the volcano, but internally, minor activities are going on. There is movement, there is plate movement, and this frictional plate movement will cause partial melting, and the partial melting will cause materials to begin to melt and accumulate. And in some years to come, like the earlier said, it can still be ejected to the surface. So an, an extinct volcano can still become active volcano. Now, for the frontomagmatic eruptions, we say this are uh, this criteria is looking at the aspect that this is driven by the superheating of steam through contact with magma. And it ranges in intensity from relatively small lava fountain. Again, first thing about fractal magmatic eruption is that it is driven by the superheating of steam through contact with magma. And then it is the, the, the intensity ranges from relatively small lava formations to very large lava fountains. So that the key thing here is that superheating of steam with magma and intensity ranges from small mountains or smaller lava fountains. We revisit the real life situation. We earlier said the intensity, the intensity, the explosivity and the damage caused by a volcanic eruption over the years in Cameroon and some parts of the world has not been the same. For example, the 1999 eruption of Mount Cameroon was more severe than the one in 2000 at Bukwango. The 1999 occurred around Makindu and the 2000 in Bukwango. So when you go around this area today, you realize that the amount of the intensity the damage are not the same. What was happening in the situation? Why do some volcanoes erupt violently while others do not? In the course of our lesson, we gave the explanation why volcanoes behave as such. And so we are given a summary which we should not forget. Any time see any time you are asked to classify a volcano, what should come to your mind is that volcanoes, no matter how vast they may be spread around the world, are classified based on the activity around the volcano. And following this criteria, we are able to identify three types of volcanoes. One, dormant volcanoes. Two, active volcanoes, three extinct volcanoes. So based on the activity, we have just three volcanoes that are dormant, volcanoes that are active, volcanoes that are extinct. So this active can also be, this dormant can also be referred to as a quiet or effusive and we have the active and extinct. So, if you come across another literature which says that based on activities of a volcano, we have quiet or effusive, active or ex and extinct, you should not be surprised and you should not be confused. It is the same thing. It just depends on the appellation at the time. So, whether dormant or quiet is the same thing, active, extinct. These are the criteria 
these are the different types of volcanoes that are right under the activity of around the volcano. The frontomagmatic eruptions are the, are the type of eruptions that are driven by the superheating of steam through contact with magma. So when steam comes in contact with magma, these kind of volcanic reactions or processes are referred to as frontomagmatic eruptions because they come in contact with steam. And what they have known is the fact that this frontomagmatic eruption, their intensity ranges from relatively small lava fountains to very large lava fountains. To conclude our lesson of today, let us see how far we have understood this lesson with this exercise. Our exercise has two questions. One, give the criteria for classifying volcano. Give the criteria for classifying volcano. Remember, we saw the criteria. And then two, name the properties of the magma that constitute a volcano or the properties of magma that give rise to the different types of volcano. Give you some few minutes to reflect, recall what we were explaining a few minutes ago, and when we come back, we look at the answers to these two questions. Beautiful. If you follow the lecture, the, le the, le the explanation carefully, then the answer to your question one should have read as follows. What do you understand by the term viscosity of magma? It's the ability of magma to flow. The properties of magma include temperature, viscosity, dissolved gases, and chemical composition. Assignment. Our take home assignment will be one. There are two questions. Give three examples of the following categories of volcanoes. Give three examples of the following categories of volcanoes. One, dormant, A, dormant volcano, you give an example of a dormant volcano. B, you give an example of an active volcano. And C, you give an example of extinct volcano. Question two for the assignment. What will cause a volcano once observed as extinct to erupt? What will cause a volcano once observed or described as an extinct volcano to regain activity or to regain volcanic activity or better still for that particular volcano which has been described some time ago as an extinct volcano to erupt again. Remember in the course of the lesson we explained and gave reasons why these extinct volcanoes could regain activity. To prepare this lesson, we gathered material from Ordinary Level Geology for Form 5, Form 4 and 5 Sciences, written by Kennedy Simon 2021, second edition, and that book is published by Glassroom Publishers. We equally gathered some material from Fundamentals of Geology by APA and others. And then we used Penguin Dictionary of Geology, written by Witten D. G. A. Brooks, R. J. R. V. of 1972. And finally, we equally took material from the book called Ed Sciences, written by Eric W. Danielson and Edward J. Denek, J. R. 1986. We have come to the end of our lesson 27. Our next lesson will be on types of volcanic eruptions 